time to take on the zombie hordes in Dying Light the following, as once again we step into the shoes of forgettable hero Kenny Crane. Isn't his name Kyle? I've forgotten. It's worth mentioning that this isn't a standalone expansion, so you will need to own the original Dying Light. And you'll also need a character that's made it through at least the prologue of the main game. You'll be bringing that character along too, so any gear or skills you have will carry over. This time out, old mate Kevin Crane gets some information about a mysterious group of people outside the city who are immune to the zombie virus. So he heads off to find them to get his hands on whatever it is they have. Pretty quickly you find out this group worships someone or something known as the mother who holds all the secrets to the cure. No one wants you here. But being a distrustful cult, they're in no mood to share anything with you, so to get them to open up to you, you'll first have to earn their trust. If you do enough good for our community. And to do that, you just have to do side quests. Then once you've earned enough trust points, lol, you can progress a bit more through the story. You know, usually I don't like it when games lock the main story away like that, but I think they've actually paced it out quite well here. There's always a wide selection of quests available, so you can just pick the ones you want to do. And you don't have to complete many of them to level up your trust, so it didn't really feel like a grind to move on. Now, all of this takes place in a vast new area. It's about twice as big as the original game, but it's much less dense because it's all in open fields. And since there's not much to climb on, you'll be relying on a trusty dune buggy to get around. I was a bit sad there wasn't a lot of climbing, though. You know, the parkour system is so great, it just felt really underused. I don't know, I think it was a good move to try and mix things up. Often with these big expansions, I always feel like I'm just playing more of the same game, but this felt a bit different and fresh. Well, I think they could have found a middle ground. There is one town to climb around, but just a few more towns spread around the place would have been nice. Fair enough, but you can't deny that it's so much fun driving around. Oh, for sure. It's like if Forza Horizon crossed over with The Walking Dead. And there's a nice, deep skill tree dedicated to the buggy. I especially like that you can equip it with some offensive bits of kit, like a flamethrower or, my favourite, the landmine dispenser. And just like your weapons, your buggy parts will take damage and degrade as you drive over rough roads or gunk up your bumper with some undead roadkill. And you can even run out of fuel. So if you don't drive carefully, you'll be repairing or replacing parts regularly. And Hex, I did not drive carefully. But what did you think of the story? Well, I still don't really like Kanye Crane as the hero. Where? Shot him straight through the head. No, you idiot. Where is his body? Oh, not far from here. And it just doesn't feel like there's a lot going on. Most of the game, you're just doing side quests and running errands. And come back to us with all that stuff. But there's a really strong finale, and I actually think that made up for it. And overall, I do think this story is much stronger than the first game. Yeah, and it's a big game, too. Even though I just focused on getting through the story as fast as possible, it still took about 14 hours. Well, let's wrap this up. What are you giving it? Well, I think the Doom Buggy is great, and it's good to see how well this runs on PC. It's a generous expansion. I'm going to give it four out of five stars. It's three and a half from me.